Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There is a very important article today in the Los Angeles Times. It's available online. I encourage you to look at it. Right? It's Charles Barkley talking about the upcoming series between the Los Angeles Clippers who have home court advantage and the San Antonio Spurs. In the article, Charles Barkley points out that two members of the Los Angeles Clippers are holding them back. Those two members are DeAndre Jordan because most of Jordan's offense are dunks, right? He's offensively limited. Understand, we're talking about the guy who led the league in rebounds per game. He's an indispensable part of the Clipper attack. He's the man who Doc Rivers believes should be named Defensive Player of the Year, right? Key part of the Clipper attack, unfortunately, his offensive skills, at least according to Charles Barkley, are limited to dunks. Barkley believes that if you tallied up all of the points he scored in the season, 90% of those points would likely come off dunks. Right? I think he's right. The other person, Barkley blames for holding the Clippers back a bit, is Blake Griffin. Right? His point is that Blake Griffin these days hasn't developed his half-court game. Right? Blake Griffin has become too much of a jump shooter. I think he's right on both counts. Right? Even though they cost me last night, and I apologize to premium members for that pick, but even though they cost me last night, I think the San Antonio Spurs, the road team in the series, right? They don't have home court advantage. I believe the San Antonio Spurs beat the Clippers, right? Why? Because, quite frankly, the Clippers are a bit limited. DeAndre Jordan is a terrible free throw shooter, right? Terrible. He doesn't have great back-to-the-basket offensive skills. I believe a skillful coach like Greg Popovich will find a way to defend him. Right? My idea of a great center is someone like Akeem Olajuwon. Right? A guy who could destroy you offensively under the basket, and then, if you crowd him under the basket, can destroy you all the way out to 15 feet. Right? That's a great center. Not a guy who, quite frankly, is limited offensively to dunks and putbacks. The problem I have with Blake Griffin is simply... I like bigs who know they're big, right? Understand, if Blake fancies himself after Magic Johnson, right? I'm here to tell you Magic Johnson had back-to-the-basket skills. Magic Johnson could actually play in the half court. He could play in the low post, right? Magic could move to center as he did during an NBA Finals and dominate. Think about some great players in the open court. Jordan, Kobe. I'm telling you, both of those guys could get down into the low post and had more refined low post skills than Blake Griffin. Right? DeAndre Jordan and Blake Griffin look great on highlight films. There's no question about it. Right? The dunks and all that other stuff. Oh, man, it looks good and stuff like that. But we're in the time of the year now where you're going to have to play playoff basketball, right? Big men are going to have to do more than just take jumpers and do dunks, right? I think, as Charles does, the reason why the Clippers are where they are is because of Chris Paul. I almost said Cliff Paul. It's because of Chris Paul, right? Chris Paul makes the whole thing work. Here's something not mentioned. 
in the Los Angeles Times article, historically, Chris Paul has been slowed down by Cowie Leonard. Understand, the Spurs' Cowie Leonard arguably is the best defensive player in the game. Certainly, he's on the very short list. Right? So you have a superstar who makes things happen, who's going to be dealing with a A-plus defender. And then you have teammates who, in the regular season, as long as it's up and down, right, can make things happen on a highlight reel, but who don't have, in DeAndre Jordan's case, a polished offensive low post game, and don't have, in Blake Griffin's case, a full grasp on the idea that he's a big man who needs to do better in the low post. I think this is going to come back to haunt the Clippers. Both teams have been red hot. I like the defending champions in this series. I'm going with the San Antonio Spurs, even though game one is going to be in Clipperville. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you feel that Charles Barkley and my agreement with Charles Barkley is full of hot air, if you feel that DeAndre Jordan actually has a refined offensive game, is actually better at the free throw line than I'm letting on here, right? And keep in mind, when you have a guy as bad as DeAndre Jordan is at the free throw line, and you have a coach as good as Greg Popovich is on San Antonio's bench, doesn't this just reek of a situation where the Spurs are going to start fouling Jordan at key moments of the game, and Doc Rivers is going to have to think about pulling Jordan at the end of games rather than risk having him be an automatic turnover at the free throw line. Right? So these are some things to think about. Let me hear what you're thinking about with regard to this series. Just know, apart from last night, which was a car crash for me, Thank you, Anthony Davis. Right? Just know the Spurs look good. I think the Spurs take this series. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.